Deuteronomy 21:13b Ve'achar ken tavo eleha u ve'alta ve'hayta lecha lecha So we get here the rest of verse 13 today and we begin with and after thus the thus here referring to the morning rites that uh, uh, the girl was allowed to take morning uh, and weeping for her father and mother after that. And I might take this a little more restrictive even uh, and say something like, and only after that. Now that's not here. I'm interpreting it that way. But the idea is that it's only after this girl has been allowed to mourn for her father and mother and her captivity situation that the man is allowed to marry her. But indeed, after thus, you shall go in to her or you shall enter to her. Here's a call imperfect to MS of the verbal root bow. And notice we have the ta preformative. And then let me uh, mention to you here, we have the a vowel that goes to the O vowel, and this is typical of the cull versus the A vowel to the I vowel. A performative to I thematic vowel would be hifil. Here we have AO, so we're looking at a cull imperfect of that hollow root. So you shall enter to her and you shall marry her. Here the verbal root is Baal. You might recognize that word. It could be something like uh, to be master or to own, that's possible. But here, Halot lists it uh, as a second definition to marry her. And I think that's the idea. A Baal is a husband, so you shall become a husband to her. Might be another way of thinking about it. Here we have a third feminine singular pronominal suffix, and the verb form is a vekatol, or again, parse it a different way. We would call it a call perfect uh, to ms, plus the third feminine singular suffix. And you shall marry her, and she shall be for you as a wife, or she shall exist for you as a wife. Here's a call perfect third feminine singular of the verbal root haya. Notice third hey, we get that tav that drops in, that feminine tav, and we have a vekatal form here, and she shall exist for you as a wife or in the status of a wife.